Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever time it is where you may happen to be or whenever you're watching the recording of this show. Welcome to Office Hours presented by School Rubric, an organization that is highlighting educators from all around the world through its magazine, podcast network, and online shows. I'm so excited to have you here in Office Hours. I'm happy to be back on Office Hours tonight because it is in this space that we are striving not only to amplify the voices of educators, but their students as well. In fact, that is going to be one of our biggest focuses on amplifying and portraying all the great work that students are doing in these spaces. My name is Charles Williams. I am a K through eight principal in Chicago, a podcast host, and one of the hosts of School Rubrics Other Shows inside the principal's office. So a lot of wonderful things happening in this space, but we'll talk a little bit more about those a little bit later. Now, if you've been watching these shows, you might think, guys, you've already done one word and you're kind of right. Back on the 30th, we did a show called One Word where we amplify the voices of students. We wanted to hear from our students, what was their one word? Well, apparently it went so well that we had an organization that said, you know what, we're going to do our own version of that. And they are here with us today, Burlington County Institute of Technology. They created their own version of one word and we are going to highlight some of their students' voices today. We have on hosting tonight with me tonight is, I gotta practice, I told her I was gonna do this, is Melissa <laughs> Cool Cat Camp <laughs> Easy. <laughs> so she is my co-host tonight. Um, she's going to be introducing herself in just a moment. Hello, Melissa. How are you? Hello, everyone. Thank you, Charles. So before we jump in with Melissa, and I know you guys are dying to hear from her, I want to introduce you to Dr. Nagy, um, the superintendent of BCIT. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thank you very much, Charles, for having us this evening. Thank you for being on the show. And Michelle, I know we will get to you as well. But before we move any further, Dr. Nagy, can you just talk a little bit about BCIT, what you do there and the, the concept of the school? Sure. Thank you very much, Charles. I appreciate that. And I want to thank uh, Melissa and I want to thank Michelle for, for being with us this evening. I'm the superintendent of schools of two school districts, one, and they are county run in the United States. And we're in the center part of New Jersey. Um, one is Burlington County Institute of Technology, which is a vocational technical school. We have over 34 programs as of September of this coming year. And um, it, it, anything from allied health to your construction technology um, to uh, your computer. And we're looking at cybersecurity from that vantage point. So it's a really, and you think about this, these are high school kids. And then we have a post-secondary for those adults that are looking at making a change in careers or they're looking at adding on to industrial uh, credentials uh, and, and, and pro providing them an opportunity to, uh, to get involved in the, uh, the work field in a different way. Um, in addition to that, we have a special services school district, pre-K through age 21. And then we give them an opportunity also for those that have the ability levels to actually uh, be able to find a place in the work field and to give them the skill sets to be able to do that, including earning college credits for those that are able to do that. So we're really excited. Somebody asked me, what is it like being a superintendent in something like this? And I say, I'm in this position because I like creating the future that does not yet exist. Nice, nice. I love that response, the, the, the future that does not yet exist. Yes. I see, and I know part of your mission is about lifelong learners and innovation and career-centered programs. Um, so that, that is wonderful. Um, uh, I wanna introduce myself. My name is Melissa Campisi. I am also from New Jersey. So Charles, you're outnumbered. <laughs> <laughs> I am an EL educator, author, and advocate here. And I'm just so excited that we can amplify and lift more voices, especially in my home state. Um, and I also want to introduce Michelle uh, Hill. Thank you for being here tonight, Michelle. Can you tell us a little bit about your role at BCIT? Sure, I'd love to. Um, I was also a Spanish teacher before I took this role. So this is uh, really good New Jersey vibes here, although I'm originally from Philadelphia, but uh, been a transplant for a long time. 
My role at BCIT is the coordinator of admissions as well as strategic marketing. So I'm responsible for attracting people to BCIT and showing them the power of a career in technical education and then helping them through that process of application all the way up until they actually enter our doors at BCIT, as well as social media marketing for the school district. A little different than when I was in the classroom, but I love it because I'm a passionate educator. I tell people all the time, I don't sell BCIT. That's our, our mission is to help students find their potential. And um, it, it really is just amazing what we've done in the past three years, Dr. Nagy, with a, a great team of people to boost enrollment and really just amplify what it is that we offer at BCIT. So happy to be here tonight and uh, showcase some of our students with their one word. That is wonderful, wonderful. And we are excited to be able to provide a space for your students to be able to share their one word. And as I said at the beginning, these are going to be students from both campuses of, of, of Burlington and just being able to say, what does this one, what does this year mean to them? What does the school mean to them wrapped up in a single word? And as we've talked about before, the power of one word, being able to ground yourself in a single concept and allowing that to drive you. I know that we have probably all have our one words picked out for the year, um, but we talked enough about ourselves. So in just a moment, we're gonna be sharing four videos, um, but make sure that you stick around for the entire session because at the very end, even though we're only gonna be able to highlight four and talk about those four, we have a wonderful compilation video for you at the very end of today's presentation. So please make sure that you stick around. Now, before we jump into conversations, I saw a few people popping in. Tracy, thank you for being in the space. Thank you for supporting us. So viewers, if you are here, if you're watching, we don't want you just to sit back and to receive. We want you to be engaging. Feel free to drop your one word for this for this year, um, your one word for the summer, whatever one word that you have. <laughs> Ask your questions. We want you to be engaged. Remember, this is not a one-way conversation. So with that being said, let's fire up our first two student videos. Hey, my name is Chris and I'm from Willingboro, New Jersey. And the way I'll describe school is flexible. The reason I think school is flexible is because I can still continue my studies while I'm at home. It is so good and so useful just to be able to be at home and still continue to do my work and also take my notes. I love being online. It's Even though it's hard for a lot of people, I still try to find the good things in life. Like taking notes and continue to get smarter and smarter every day. Hello, my name is Savan Cross. I live in Browns Mills, New Jersey. And the word I would best describe 2020 is aware. Why do I say aware? Not only in 2020 have we been affected by the pandemic, but we've also seen a surge of racial injustice, especially with the death of George Floyd and the protests that's been happening. And now I feel we have grown to see what the problem is and grown to finally be aware of what the problem is that racial injustice still exists and racism will never go away wow two very powerful videos and you know i think the thing that i love the most about this is we are hearing the authentic voices of our students and when we give them this opportunity. So I wanted to open it up. I'm not sure, Dr. Nagy, if would you like to kick things off your thoughts about these two videos? Well, first and foremost, I'm very, very uh, proud of our students for being able to take a look at some very, very hard issues and to just very succinctly address them with one word. So the idea of flexible, the whole idea of being virtual as well as uh, being uh, present and in person. It's a dichotomy that uh, we're feeling across the world. Students are at home, students are in person. And um, to be able to learn and to be able to migrate through that uh, says a lot about the respective school systems and about our students. The whole idea of being aware is truly, uh, and it's coming from students, says a lot in terms of equity and diversity and where we find ourselves. BCIT, we've ta actually taken on a vertical and horizontal look 
at equity and diversity. In fact, we even created a position of an assistant superintendent for equity and diversity to, uh, to look at how it is that we could do a better job at really being um, equitable and also at the same time uh, appreciating diversity and building upon the diversity of our student body and also our staff. So kudos to our students, very, very proud of them. Yes, absolutely. I think it says a lot the fact that he feel he felt comfortable knowing that he was going to be sharing this video with the, the the school community, and that you know I can speak openly in this space. It says a lot about the school community. So, yeah. so thank you, Michelle. Could you jump in on this? Yeah. I, first off, the uh, the first gentleman, I loved his props, but also his his vigor in in talking <laughs> about being flexible. I I see that he might actually get a call from some kind of an advertising organization because he has a powerful voice. But one of the things that appeared in the chat just recently is how much empowerment appeared in these videos. And um, I agree with you so much that, uh, that it's incredible that our kids feel safe enough to be able to have those hard conversations and to put it out there. Um, I do work alongside of the assistant superintendent on the equity champion group of staff members and it is such a pleasure to be able to see what's happening in our district in terms of people really getting more comfortable with these hard conversations and empowering our young people to be able to elevate the conversations in productive ways so i'm just thrilled um, with both of the responses i thought they were just terrific yeah, wonderful. Um, I think that it is great that your school is embracing student voice. Um, part of the diverse and equity, I think, is the awareness, bringing forth what the students are thinking, their experiences, how they feel, then taking into that a plan and then an action. So this is why student voices are so important um, uh, to us. No, absolutely, absolutely. Um, so I know that we have another set of videos, um, and I, I wanted to—I was going to hold on to this one, um, especially Isabella's, because I have a personal connection there for my own family. So very excited to share these next two videos um, from Alexio and Isabella. Hi, my name is Alexio. I go to BCIT West Hampton. One word to describe this school year is that the school is amazing because the teachers help the students succeed in their subject and one other thing that I like about the school is that I do plumbing because I enjoy lots of uh, hands-on work and the people are very nice and the teachers are very nice. Hi, my name is Isabella, I go to BCIT West Tech and one word I would use to describe the school year is interesting. Uh, I would use interesting to describe the school year because I'm taking fashion design, which is a little bit different than any other thing I've actually experienced. And I'm learning how to sew and design and draw anatomy and all that kind of stuff. And it's also interesting because I'm in person and also at home some days. So, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I don't know about you, but did you guys realize what Alessio was saying when he said it was amazing? Right. He didn't say like, oh, I've got, you know, all." he talked about relationships. Yes. He I, I was going to jump in there. Can I just say that? Yes, um, please, Carl, please, that please. Next week kicks off Teacher Appreciation Week. And I'm so excited to share this video with our staff because when they see the way the students honor them and speak about them, I think that that is, it's just so powerful and reminds them of why they do what they do. So yeah, I, I noticed that right away and I thought that was just terrific. I think the thing that hits me and just building upon what uh, Michelle mentioned was, you know, in the workplace today, 75 to 80% of those that are in the workforce do not like what it is that they're doing. Um, and so as a result of that, when you hear videos like this, when students are passionate and they're, they're interested, they're engaged, and this provides them the hope and the skill set for the future that does not yet exist that they even know about. And we know that seven out of the next 10 jobs that our students will have do not yet exist at this particular moment in time. So what we're doing is creating the opportunities for students to think, apply, and learn those skill sets 
to be able to create new knowledge and to create other opportunities for themselves. And I think, you know, whether it's fashion design or well, whether it's an uh, individual like Alessio who's coming uh, and, and, and immigrating and uh, appreciating the Italian language and migrating through the English language and to be able to live that American dream says a lot about what America offers right now. And it's positive. And you hear a lot about the negativity, but you know, our students have focused on what is before them and how it is they can tackle and make a difference in the world. And so it says a lot about lifelong learning and leading by example. I love it. And I love the optimism in their voices. I love that after this challenging year and even during this challenging year, they're seeing the positives, they're um, enjoying school, they're building these partnerships with their teachers. And it's just, it's just such a wonderful reinforcement that you know what the teachers are doing and what the students are doing, we're, we're all in this together and you know, providing the best for, uh, for our students and their futures. Absolutely. You know, I, I was going to say, I mentioned earlier that I had a connection to this. So um, one of my daughters, who is now a freshman at Purdue, she is studying fashion design. And so when Isabella mentioned that, you know, I'm thinking to myself that that's an amazing opportunity to start that process in high school, to get to figure out what it is that you want to do and have some real world opportunities. Right. Because, I mean, how many of us when we were in college were like, yeah, I know what I want to do. Then we start doing it. And we're like, yeah, no, that's not what I want to do. Right. So the idea that students are getting an opportunity to get that exposure, get that experience before moving on, you know, into that post-secondary space it is tremendous. And I think, again, the, the words that they're choosing says a lot about their experiences and the, the, the culture that you all have created. So kudos to you as well. You know, one of the things that we do really well at BCIT and career and technical education is not only provide a career pathway, but it's that experience of, do I want to do this for the rest of my life? And do I want to, you know, uh, hunker down and spend all the money in college on that career pathway? Sometimes what they discover is what they don't like, just as and that's just as important as what they do like. Um, but it is often a platform. And I always tell them it's never wasted because it's a platform where they can jump off into many different career pathways. But it hasn't cost them anything except for that time and the experience. And that is just as valuable for our students, um, even if they don't go on to it, the exact career pathway that they studied at BCIT, they do have the opportunity for all the academic programs, et cetera, but it, it is a valuable life experience for them. So that's a, a great point. Thanks, Charles. No if problem. Mind, I'd just like to add that uh, to, to Michelle's point, it's a return on investment in the business world. Mm -hmm. And so, for very little money, if anything at all, they're able to explore different types of career paths. And parents have to be happy because their students are, their children are able to go into college experience already knowing exactly what they want, having already tested a number of different other areas. And on top of that, then they're not, they're able to then have a industry credential and stackable industry credentials mm -hmm. before going to college. So that distinguishes themselves over any of the other students that they are in in college. And then they're able then to, to compete very, very comfortably because they've already had the hands-on type of experience. It doesn't get any better than that. Having lived in Europe for, uh, for over seven years, I've seen it work. And here in the United States, this is a major inflection point for us. And we are certainly capitalizing on that. And the students who are, who are at BCIT and taking advantage of it will certainly be the beneficiaries. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, I, I really believe that the programs and similar programs to what you're doing um, should become a more commonplace in, in, in schools, right? That there should not be specialized locations or you got to go to this campus in order to receive this type of education. I mean, the, imagine the power if this was just a normal part of schooling, right? Like that would be wonderful. Now, we we are a few minutes ahead of uh, time. So I wanted to throw a curveball because this was just something I was thinking. So I'm going to take my response and slow it down a little bit, give you guys a little bit of thought time. 
So our students have shared with us their one word for themselves. So as you're thinking about your students, whether the students we're seeing here today, whether the students back on your campus, what would be your one word for your students as we are wrapping up this school year? So to give you a little bit of thought time, my one word is going to be curiosity. I want my students to, to hang on to that passion. As I mentioned earlier, I'm a, I'm a principal of a K to eight. So I've got babies, right? Those kids who come to school that are fired up for learning, who just want to know everything about everything. And so I want them to hang on to that curiosity as they get older, as they go throughout their middle school years, because I think oftentimes, and we have to reflect on what we are doing, what is it that we're doing that is killing that curiosity where school has become more of a process than anything else? So my one word for all of my students, whether you're watching or whether this is going to get back to you in some way, is I want you to remain curious. I want you to remain asking that one question that annoys us as parents when you're tiny, but never stop asking is <laughs> why? All right, Melissa, mm -hmm. I'm going to give our guests a little more time. So yes. I'm going to pass it over to you. So my one word for, for students is hopeful or hope. Um, I just want them to still remain optimistic and even through the hardships of this year, just to, 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 to keep the focus at the, of the end goal and and just be positive and hopeful and you know we're really in this together we're here to support each other and um i just think now it's just a, what we're opening through school school rubric is a beautiful thing of just lifting their voices hearing their experiences and learning about our students they're part of the the formula to the future of education wonderful wonderful i'm going to bring it right around my screen here michelle you're up Okay, I know Dr. Nagy addresses it in the video, so I'm, uh, I'm interested to see if he has a different one that he's going to share with us. But uh, my <laughs> one word would be resilience. And that is, much like Melissa, I want them to be hopeful about the future, but I want them to understand that we all struggle. And mm -hmm. this pandemic has really probably challenged our students in ways that they have never been challenged before and having the resilience to get through this time period and still come out as a positive as we've seen some of these students be so hopeful and so positive about what the future looks like is really incredible to me. So I hope that they have resilience to get through not just this time, but any other time that they are faced, you know, facing challenges that are really hard, that they remember how to dig deep and they remember this time and this year and say, we got through a pandemic, I can get through anything. Absolutely, absolutely. All right, Dr. Nagy, you're up. I'm gonna to have to add another word here. I just, I, I, I'm just explosive with the just energy right now and that is optimistic. And I will say this, I'm a freed Zachariah guy, kind of guy and in his, in his work in the post, uh, post pandemic, you, know, you take a look at these particular situations that happened upon us, and I do say that upon us, and that is the pandemic that we are currently in right now. We take a look at history. We take a look at the bubonic plague. We have the Renaissance that follows. Tremendous uh, a change, and it, it just changed the world forever. We take a look at what happened with the Spanish plague, the uh, 1917s. You take a look at what happened right after that, the Industrial Revolution. Here we are. We've got the pandemic, 2020, 2021. You can already see it now. You're sensing the energy. You're sensing a lot of the innovation that's taking place. We are ready to explode as a world, as a nation. And so what I'm saying right now is we need to take a look at building blocks. We need to take a look at building upon the experiences that we've learned, how we've used our time in this pandemic, the skill sets that we've learned, and how do we create new opportunities before us and looking at the future. And so the bottom line is we need to make sure that as, as they say in Italian and in Latin, and I was a Latin teacher, sano, a sound mind and a healthy body. How is it that we keep the balance going forward, learning what it is that we put together during this particular time of the pandemic, apply it and be better selves and iterations of ourselves a day from today or next year. 
Absolutely, absolutely. And thank you for that. I, I, I tossed you that curveball. You guys all knocked it out of the park. Um, so wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. If you haven't noticed, I am a fan of baseball. Um, so um, I played it. So. And I, yeah. And I, I wanted to say thank you, Debbie. I see you in this space. So before we jump into our compilation, I just wanted to remind everybody, please make sure that you join the Global Educator Network Facebook group. Please make sure that you join. We want to continue these conversations. We want to be able to engage with you off of these spaces. It's not just this once in a while. So please make sure that you jump into those spaces, join, join the conversation, drop ideas, drop questions. Please make sure you do that. And then I know you're like, there's so much happening. And I get that. So please make sure that you follow our calendar. You can see the bit.ly down there and you can see all of the amazing things that School Rubric has going on. I would be remiss to mention that join us for Inside the Principal's Office this Saturday as we discuss data, right? Something that all school leaders, well, all educators need to know. So please make sure that you join us this Saturday for that. So with that being said, we are now going to jump into the compilation and see all of the wonderful voices stemming out of Burlington. So sit back, relax, and enjoy. Dr. Nagy, would you like to uh, cue this one up? I'm sorry, I, I just took it from you. <laughs> no, I, I just want to say I, I am just so proud of our students and uh, all of our staff. And we do have one word and everybody looks at the world very, very differently. But we've embraced innovation and creativity and lifelong learning. And this is what our students have to say. Hi, my name is Dr. Christopher Nagy. I'm the superintendent of schools for the Burlington County Institute of Technology. And my focus today is on one word, but I'm starting with one letter first, an I. Most would think of innovation, but I'm thinking of intentionality, which ultimately leads to innovation. We need to be intentional about what it is that we do, how we do it, and what that looks like and that leads them to innovation. Hey, my name is Chris and I'm from Willingboro, New Jersey. And the way I'll describe school is flexible. The reason I think school is flexible is because I can still continue my studies while I'm at home. It is so good and so useful just to be able to be at home and still continue to do my work and also take my notes. I love being online. It's even though it's hard for a lot of people, I still try to find the good things in life, like taking notes, and continue to get smarter and smarter every day. My name is Autumn Powell. I'm from Mount Holly, New Jersey. And the one word that I would describe for this year would be steady. In these uncertain times, the best we can do is, well, you know, move at a normal steady pace. If we rush things, then it'll become a mess. And if you work too slowly, then it will still be a mess. So my word would be steady. My name is Sarah Banna. I'm from Medford, New Jersey. And my word that best describes this experience is new because this whole virtual life has been new to all of us and it has made us feel different about our learning experience. Hi, my name is Shania and I'm from Burlington County, New Jersey. And if I had to describe the year 2020, I would describe it as sanguine because even though it was kind of crazy, I think that there is a positive and optimistic look to the future. Hello, my name is Savan Cross. I live in Browns Mills, New Jersey. And the word I would best describe 2020 is aware. Why do I say aware? Not only in 2020 have we been affected by the pandemic, but We've also seen a surge of racial injustice, especially with the death of George Floyd and the protests that's been happening. And now I feel we have grown to see what the problem is and grown to finally be aware of what the problem is, that racial injustice still exists and racism will never go away. 
Hello, my name is Michaela Anderson and I'm from Tabernacle, New Jersey. And my word for 2021 is video game. Because, well, no matter how many times you actually start doing it, you will always be a character in your own video game. And the more you compete, the better you get at it, just like life. So, have fun and play. Hi, my name is Jill. I go to BCIT West Hampton. One word to describe the school year is fun. A couple things that make it fun is I'm in person a couple days a week. I have skills competition and I participate in school sports. Go Panthers! Hi, my name is Alessio. I go to BCIT West Hampton. One word to describe this school year is that the school is amazing because the teachers help the students succeed in their subject and one other thing that I like about the school is that I do plumbing because I enjoy lots of uh, hands-on work and the people are very nice and the teachers are very nice. Hi, my name is Faith Asalu. I go to BCIT West Hampton and one word that I would use to describe the school year is definitely beneficial because I was able to come in and have new experiences with new teachers. I was also able to experience some of the things in chemistry that people weren't able to do. Like I had in-person labs with my chemistry teacher. Also. In my sports medicine class, we were able to get new equipment and I was one of the main people that were able to test it. Go Panthers! <laughs> Hi, my name is Isabella. I go to BCIT West Tech and one word I would use to describe the school year is interesting. Uh, I would use interesting to describe the school year because I'm taking fashion design, which is a little bit different than any other thing I've actually experienced. And I'm learning how to sew and design and draw anatomy and all that kind of stuff. And it's also interesting because I'm in person and also at home some days, so, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for watching School Rubric on YouTube. Make sure that you like, follow, and subscribe in order to stay looped in on all of our diverse collection of shows, interviews, panels, tutorials, and more from educators around the globe. And visit us at schoolrubric.com for even more great content such as our online articles, Interact Magazine, featured podcasts, and more. Thank you.